Hey everybody, Mike B here, and today I'm going to give my thoughts and some reflections on the making of the film Revelé. Now, for those of you that have been following this project, it started about a year ago when the writer and director Michael Ackerman contacted me and asked if I wanted to be an advisor for his project, and I not so politely just said no, and then read the script, got into it, I've made several videos on this and done live streams with him and other people that are involved with the project. Uh, but it's been about a year in the making, and at the end of February, we went down there, and we finished shooting on March 11th. So, it was a wild ride. It's been about a week since I'd been back, a little bit less than that, and um, I'm kind of recovered from it mentally and physically. Overall, very good. I'm just going to tell you about my experience. It's my first film I've ever worked on, ever, and uh, it was very, very unique. So... This, will, this might be a little bit lengthy because I'm going to go over some details and then I'll show you a few pictures, a little sneak preview of some of the actors when we were on set, what they looked like, and uh, kind of the results. So here we go. Um, it was a long time in the making and there were several times where it looked like it wasn't going to work out, but we have a great team of producers and uh, other people on the crew that just made this happen. Got some really good investors in this, so it ended up happening. And so March 27th, myself and the two other American advisors that turned out to be advisors for everybody with uniforms, costumes, and all that stuff, went down to Springfield, Missouri, and had an Airbnb. So Brian McCallion from Connecticut, he drove 18 hours, stopped at show of shows on the way down, and uh, he had the longest drive of anybody. <clears throat> I had a nine and a half hour drive from northern Wisconsin down to there. And then Sam Niles, he's from Kansas, so he had the shortest drive. But we were all there, so we started prepping stuff. We got all of our weapons accounted for that we brought, all the gear that we were going to need. We sorted out everybody's equipment and started aging it. That was Sam's wheelhouse, which he did a fantastic job at. You'll see in the pictures later. And we did that, and then the day after that, we uh, went out to the set location. We got there before most people did. There were a few people on, on scene, like um, Jörg Rochlitzer, who was an executive producer, and uh, there were several other people out there, but we kind of were the advance party doing recon and getting things ready. People were building the set. Um, Doug Strong, who I don't know if I've had him on a live stream yet, but probably should at some point. Uh, he had his crew out there. He brought a bunch of stuff down there prior to this, and they were building the set, digging positions, fighting positions, shell holes, you name it like that. Uh, abandoned lines with just detritus and equipment laying everywhere, so that was pretty cool. And we got there and went through, did some recon, touched up the set a little bit, and started staging stuff. We got the gear dirty and whatnot. Uh, the, the mud down there where we were at, it wasn't in Springfield. It was actually outside. It was kind of halfway between Springfield and Branson, so it was a little bit far south of Springfield, about 45 minutes, and it was way out in the middle of nowhere. And the clay and the mud down there looks very, very similar to uh, Italian mud, and so does the, the vegetation, especially this time of year. The film takes place in November 1943, so it was a pretty cool situation. There's people from Europe there that agreed, that had been to that part of Italy. And so it was nice to go out there and do that. Very muddy because the snow had just melted. They had had a snowstorm. And then, so after that, the next day, we uh, we spent that night getting things really prepped for the next day. Logistics, um, our executive producer, Myra Miller, did a fantastic job at that. We were trying to get everybody coordinated to how they're going to get there, how we're going to get all the gear to this place that we were staying at, which was a huge house out in the middle of nowhere but we had to have at one point I think around 50 people there in that house staying there we chose to not go the hotel route we got a big Airbnb it, the, the house is awesome and so we on the first the first group of people came and Brian and I met them we were wearing our, our World War II stuff like this just kind of get them in the groove of things and then we introduced them to where they'd be living for the next few days which was the basement of this place, which is a huge game room, and it's really cool. I got a theater down there. It's a McMansion, basically. It's a massive house. I don't know how many square feet it was, several thousand. And we had a catering staff full time that was there that was cooking in a kitchen, real food. We had very clean, good food for the entire production, which was a huge help. You need really good food. You can't be eating garbage and perform your best, in my opinion. So that really helped out. And so we introduced these guys to their living quarters, which were cots, a sleeping bag, and a pillow. And a lot of them loved it. Most of the actors loved that. And they're like, okay, this is going to really help out, kind of get into that feel and the groove of things. And we met our first batch. And it was interesting immediately seeing how into it these guys were. We didn't expect, I've never been around actors, like professional actors, 
from Hollywood, and these guys flew out, met the uh, cinematographer and the assistant cinematographer, or the second cinematographer, not the assistant. Um, the first and second cinematographers, awesome, Cooper and Noble. Those guys are fantastic. <laughs> You'll see in the work when it comes out. And got to meet uh, some of the uh, assistant directors and stuff like that, and it was fun. So we kind of hung out with the cast for a little bit, got them, got their uniforms sorted out, last minute details, things like that. Then they went out and did some rehearsals for the following day when we were going to be shooting. And there were people, there was one, one actor in particular that had a very unique firearm for this film. Very historically accurate, has not been featured in a film to my knowledge to this point. And he was wondering, he says, so this one's a little bit different than the other ones. How do I carry this? So Brian, whose weapon it was, or is, told him how to carry it. And this guy said, can I just walk around like five miles around the property and, you know, until I get the feel of it? Sure. So that's the amount of dedication that we saw initially. And I was like, okay, these guys are really serious. Again, haven't been around Hollywood actors before. Very cool to see that. So we got all these guys, basic firearm safety, because we were using live firearms. And we actually ended up shooting live rounds for some of the scenes. We'll get to that. And we did um, firearm safety, got people familiar with how to operate the firearm safely, not pointing at people, finger off the trigger, how to put it on safe, how to make sure it's clear, et cetera, et cetera. And that went very well. They were, a lot of people were really nervous. They never handled a real firearm before, but we got that taken care of. These guys jumped right into it and were very safe and I was comfortable with it. So was Brian and so was Sam. We were the three main people dealing with the firearms and stuff. Everybody was trained to be a safety officer. So they saw something unsafe or they felt something was unsafe. Um, they would notify somebody or just take action, and so that's how we, we planned that for a long time with the live firearms. And it all went off swimmingly, so that's a little spoiler, but yeah, everything went off just fine. So then the next day we went out and shot, we had some issues with uh, some of the blank firing guns and whatever, and logistics, and trying to get, just kind of get our feet wet and figure out a rhythm. First day was very long, a um, bunch of stuff happened that we didn't expect or account for, but we pivoted. A great team, uh, the crew and the cast all pivoted. We ended up shooting a scene at the end of the day that didn't go right because we had squibs and stuff like that. Yes, people get shot in this film. Whoops. Spoiler alert, but I think you already knew that. And it just didn't go well, so we were behind an entire big scene that we had to get. And we had to call the day because we were losing daylight. So that sucked, and it was a long first day. I didn't get to bed till probably uh, 2 or 3 a.m. And then up at 5. Or no, 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 up at... Um, up at like four. So yeah, I got to sleep at two and we got up at three thirty or something like that. But I didn't sleep because it was so nerve wracking and whatever. But we got through the first day. We did live fire and we got through the first day. Nobody got hurt. Nobody came close to getting hurt. We had a system in place and some people that had never fired or even touched a gun before in their life got to uh, get their feet wet on a K98 and some other stuff that guy had handled firearms before. And so they shot K K98s with legitimate German World War II surplus SMK ammunition, so that was pretty cool. Made it look a lot more realistic than just blanks and people trying to fake the recoil. So that, that's a cool thing you're going to see in the film. And so the second day, I was like, man, if it's going to be like this every day, I don't know if I can do this for two weeks. But the second day, we hit the ground running, we, we pivoted, we adjusted from things that we kind of messed up on the first day. It wasn't just one person. Everybody made a mistake at some point or another. And luckily none of them were unsafe. It was just inconvenient, like water not being in a place where we needed it to be. And it was hot out, blah, 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 blah. But the second day, we hit the ground running and it went really smooth. We got all the scenes and then some. We made up for the scene that we didn't get the night before. The second day went well. Third day, I had a little issue with the gear personally, which um, it is what it is. But that was my kind of uh, crappy day, crappy morning rather, because the afternoon went great. The whole, the whole day went great. I just think I could have done a better job on that day, but uh, it is what it is. You're going to have bad days like that. So yeah, and the third day went well, and then after that, it's just kind of a blur. The second group got there on the third day, and we met all those guys, and these actors were so, they're, they're so into their roles. Like They become a totally different person, which yeah, I know a lot of you guys that know actors are going to be like, well, that's their job. Okay, but it's really interesting to see that for the first time, somebody actually becoming somebody else for work. And there was a lot of emotion, like raw emotion, not just faked emotion that came out. And after a certain point that we were filming, it's like, okay, this is going to be tough. So there was a lot of emotional stuff going on and really heavy stuff on set um, via the work. The, the drama was minimal, so that was a good thing. But the, the kind of whole atmosphere of it was very, I mean, it's war. We're making a film about war. War is not good. It's not fun. It's not, you know, exciting. Well, it's exciting, but in a, in a negative way. It's just, it takes its toll on people, and these people actually, uh, 
these actors really got so far into it that it was like watching it actually happen in front of you, and it was really kind of tough in some scenes, but that's what's going to make this phenomenal and stand out from other films that have covered the same sort of subject matter. Um, sorry, my nose is running. Allergies. And so anyway, after we got the, the core crew there that was going to be doing the uh, most of the film, the Germans and the Americans, it was just chemistry, 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 and they all worked super well together. And yeah, it was a lot of work and a lot of hours at first, and then we got into a really good rhythm after about the third day. And from there on out, it was just magic the whole time. Stellar performances. Uh, it didn't look like they were acting. It just looked like you were watching a, a squad of Germans or a squad of Joes just there, you know, they were reading their lines, but they were actually feeling their lines and like they were saying their lines. I, I guess they weren't reading them. They were saying their lines and a lot of improv happened and Michael, uh, to his credit, said, yeah, as long as it doesn't detract from the script and it's it's relevant, you know, he'll allow it. So he allowed a lot of creative genius to come out of these actors and they are super professional, extremely good at what they do. And I don't think we had any weak links as far as that's concerned. So everybody, everybody who acted in that did a fantastic job. The crew, the cinematographer, the assistant cinematographers, the guys that were pulling focus in the background, who we, some of them we worked with in the uh, in Iowa, the trailer in September, they ended up coming down, did a fantastic job. I mean, the footage, when I was looking at the monitor and then I was looking at it actually happening, it looked exactly the same except a lot closer angles and stuff like that. They were working with that, which is really cool. This was filmed completely handheld. There were no tripods involved with any of this filming. So it makes it very unique and it makes it very uh, believable and real. Like you feel like you're actually there. So that was cool. And um, the second cinematographer said the same thing to me as he's looking through his screen uh, filming. He said it was like just being, it was like, he was looking at the screen, but he looked up and it was the same person on the screen. It was just magical. So that's how that went, and eventually we got, and I'm summarizing this because I don't want to give too much away, but I mean, these characters came to life, and it was it was insane. We had, uh, there's a scene in a cave, which we've talked about before, and this cave was very claustrophobic, and it got really heavy in there, but I don't think the uh, performances could have been better. I'm trying to think of anything I could... I could think of to, you know, for feedback for the actors, which I was trying the whole time, but the hardest part was trying to find shit they can improve on. Because it was just, I was just blown away each, each scene that when, they, when Michael said, you know, all right, cut, we got it. Yeah, the cinematographer said, we got it, I'm happy with it. And it's like, okay, we didn't have to take a lot of, take a lot of time doing extra takes on things because the actors nailed it within three takes on most takes. Usually it was one or two. Uh, there was one, one scene that was 15 minutes long 15 minutes long of almost constant dialogue and stuff like that and other things going on that was th These actors put so much time and effort into Doing this before they even got on set. I mean so much effort and we helped them any way we could with gear questions They have blah blah getting them stuff And so we wanted to make their lives easier so they could just completely focus on becoming those characters and it all worked out well the crew we had Fantastic. I think we had an awesome team once we got into that rhythm after the first day or two or second or third day it was good. It was we had good relation, working relationships with the uh, with the actors, and it was just like if they needed us, they could they knew they were free to ask. They didn't you know have any hesitation, and we were there for them, and you know they were delivering with the best that they could, and that's really damn good. You guys are gonna see that. So that's how that kind of went. Uh, it was an emotional roller coaster because when somebody's doing a performance that's that real and that raw, and they're not necessarily acting, it's you know a part of their actual human. Um, being coming to life on film it's some of it's hard to watch and it's going to be probably a little bit hard to watch for some people on film it's not supposed to be a feel-good film it's just supposed to depict war in the most raw and uncensored fashion that it does it's not going to be like tarantino over the top blood and gore and guts and you know shitty cheesy cliche lines it's also not going to be some you know kelly's heroes kind of comedy it's just going to show it the best way that all of us have researched and some of us have experienced. There's a lot of a lot of veterans on set, um, not just from the United States. There were several that were in other militaries around the world who all said this is about as close as you can get. And so that made me feel pretty good too. And some of the actors are veterans and some of the crew. So that, that also was kind of nice to have that perspective there. And uh, just the, the actors were asking really good questions about uh, lingo from the time period, just different words. They'd ask super good questions, 
And if we didn't know the answer, we found the answer, but usually somebody knew. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and then, yeah, the, the thing I can come back to is the emotions. It's very, if it affected us that much on set, hopefully it affects the audience that much. It's going to be akin to kind of like a Schindler's List thing where you watch it and you see it. You don't necessarily want to fall asleep to it on the TV at night. It's that kind of thing. But again, we're trying something new and revolutionary without having to be censored by any big companies. And I think we actually pulled that off quite well with the help of the actors and the insanely good, just the insanely good cast and crew. Yes, I'm patting ourselves on the back because, man, it was a lot of work in that two weeks. I, I, like I said, I just now feel about 85 to 90% back to human after being down there for that long. And it was a very intensive work. We did a lot of shooting in two weeks. We did an entire feature length film in two weeks, less than two weeks of shooting, actually. We did it in 11 days. No, 10 days. Yeah, because we got there on the first. We did it in 10 days. We shot a feature length film. So a lot of work. Um, our youngest actor was 15 years old and our oldest actor was 59. So quite a spread. And there were a lot of younger actors that this is their first big project that they've worked on and holy shit did they deliver. So a lot of the more experienced actors were saying, hey, you're, you're doing great. And we could see it. It was so good to see these young guys being able to just do what they wanted to do and do it very well. Very, very good uh, younger actors we had on there. Very mature, very professional. Still fun, but it, they brought their youthfulness to the camera, which is good. And then it gets kind of, you know, it, it pulls at your heartstrings a little bit as the film goes on. Anyway, not going to give too much away, but... Yeah, and then we wrapped it up and made some really good connections with people. A lot of good conversations. At nighttime, we'd go back. Everybody would eat together. We, would, we were all in the same house, so the actors really enjoyed that. It gave them the opportunity to connect with each other and say, hey, I would like to try this with, with this scene. What do you think? And then they would bounce ideas off each other. And a lot of really good improv came to the film that wasn't in the script but worked beautifully and added so much to the film as far as the content and just the uh, relatability. So lines, emotions... Uh, the body language was fantastic. The people just fell right into their care. It, it, it was insane. So anyway, I'll quit repeating myself. Um, I know this is running a little bit long, but I, I tried to make this video a couple days ago and I couldn't. I did like three or four takes and I'm just like, yeah, I, I couldn't really wrap my head around what had happened and I was so focused on a lot of details. So I'm kind of giving the macro of this. Overall, one hell of an experience. I really hope it's not the last. I think the guys looked great. They acted great. I think the crew worked really well together. I would totally work with this crew again, no questions asked. Brian and Sam were my immediate teammates, but I was off doing other things, mainly running and getting props that I forgot or we forgot to make scenes happen. But um, because they were there, I, I had total confidence in them with the weapons and with the gear and everything that they would be able to do that. And then if one of them was gone, it was it was just a great trifecta. So Sam and Brian, you guys are you guys are fucking awesome. And it's, I really, that, I think we just did a good job and it worked out so well and it was so nice to just have a team that you can rely on and that you work well with. We had debates, little historical nerd debates about the gear and who was going to be wearing what. Came to a consensus, even though not all of us agreed and we, we ended up discussing it later and it was fine. There wasn't any of this bigger dick, you know, oh, I'm right, you're wrong kind of bullshit, really with anybody on the, on the set. So that was, that was another really good thing that made this kind of magical and very easy to get a great result from. So with that, good things all around. I'm still trying to figure out things we can, well, there are things we can improve on, obviously communication, blah, 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 logistics, but that's, that's just something that comes with the territory and a lot of things went wrong, but they got, I mean, we had the house crew that was the, the caterers slash just general handy, handy men or whatever, just doing things. We had a couple flat tires that got rectified, got patched, uh, didn't have to you know go in and pay for it and all that stuff. They just did it themselves and it was done. We had vehicles back up and running pretty quickly. So a lot of things went wrong that usually would sink something or just cause a havoc and stuff, but that was all taken care of as well behind the scenes. I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch of stuff. I can probably talk about it more if we do live streams with Mike and some of the crew. Um, Devin Kay was also there. He actually uh, acted and then he helped out on the set a few days after until he had to go back to work. Really good people all around. We had people come from Germany to advise, be German language advisors, because Jorg was going to be one, but he's a producer, so he was running around like a freaking chicken with his head cut off trying to figure out problems. And Baron was one of the lead roles, and so he was on film quite a bit, so he couldn't necessarily advise all the Germans. 
all the time on their language. So we had two people come from Germany, all the way from Germany, flew over here for this project and were there constantly on each scene where there was German being spoken to make sure that the non-German, native German speakers in the German um, squads were speaking completely fluent German. And at one point, Lars, one of the German advisors said that he closed his eyes and he could not tell that these guys were not native German speakers. That's a really good thing because I challenge you guys as native German speakers to see if you can identify in this film who's a native German speaker and who is not when it comes out. Because Baron worked super hard with these guys and then Lars and his daughter Nela came over here and just perfected every single scene. So in a take, if the German wasn't right, they would say, hey, you got to do this, this, this. Here's how you say it. Here's some slang. So I, I, I would challenge you native German speakers to see who is not a native German speaker in this film. Another little caveat. So I know we're at about 20 minutes or so, 21 minutes. So I'll kind of wrap this up, but I'll show you a couple pictures at the end. I'll just do a silent slideshow. And I'm not going to put the character names or anything on there. I'm just going to put up some photographs, uh, some of which were taken by Tom Davison, who has been a photographer for years, and he usually photographs reenactments. He's photographed myself at several events, World War I back in the day. And so, yeah, if I'm missing anybody, post down in the comments if you're watching this. Other than that, overall, fantastic experience, and uh, definitely caught the bug. A lot of people caught the bug. A lot, of, a lot of new people on this uh, project have caught the bug of filmmaking, and we don't necessarily have to move to L.A. to do so. So, with that, thank you for watching. Any questions you have, throw them down in the comments. Um, this should take about six months, so they're thinking about it'll be edited. Uh, Post-production takes just as long as the pre-production, if not more. And so we want to get the editing perfect. We want to actually shell out the cash for that. If you want to donate to post-production to make this look as good as we can possibly get it, because it's very expensive in this phase. Um, contact me through Facebook, Mike B, or you can send me an email at mike at mikesmilitaria.com. And, you know, five bucks helps, whatever you want to do. If you want to donate, that's fine. We're still taking donations. So that won't, that won't, so the more donations we get, the better in post we can, we can make this because we're going to hire out a bunch of the work and we want extreme professionals working on this. So I think that covers everything. Yeah, if you got any questions, let me know, and I think it'll be released sometime next year. That's the, because uh, we're going to hit up film festivals at the end of the year. There, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait for you guys to watch this film when it comes out. Here's some photos from the set. Hope you enjoy them. See you next time.